Hey everybody, John Fenn here, Church Without Walls International, CWOWI.org. We are a house church network celebrating the gathering of the saints, meeting in homes, and rotating homes, rotating who leads, following the, the historical pattern where they went from 120 at the day of Pentecost to saturating the Roman Empire in under 300 years. They did this by taking turns, sharing responsibility, recognizing that Christ is in each one of us, and so as a result of that, any one of us can share, can have a revelation, can have something the Lord's been teaching us. And so we take turns who leads, who hosts. There's always a core group of people around which, uh, you know, they will open their homes to have others in and then take turns who leads that those weeks. Uh, so it's it, learn about us at our website. Sign up for my weekly thoughts as well, which is a weekly teaching that comes out every Friday, uh, U.S. time on a variety of subjects. And it's in the headers there of my weekly thoughts and my monthly e-newsletter. Uh, where we put news of our Zoom online meetings, our conferences, things of that nature. You know, today, sharing with you about how do I get started. You, you've been talking the last couple of weeks about house church and how the Lord had told me that house church would be the way of, of doing church and how it's the place where miracles will be found. Uh, you know, because when times get tough, and I've shared this, that historically, economic pressure and persecution are the two driving forces that have caused the church to grow uh, even a, according to like Acts chapter 5 verses 11 through 13, where on the one hand people were afraid and not sure about that group of believers. And then on the other hand, uh, the Lord added daily those who should be saved. And so you look at these things and there's great grace upon us. But, um, but the question is, how do I start? What do I do? Well, you know, we have to get away from the idea of church um, because, in fact, <laughs> early on, early on, I mean, when we first started, there was a group that met on Friday nights. And they didn't want to call themselves church, but they had all the elements of house church, Acts 2.42, where they were in teaching, fellowship, food, and prayer of Acts 2.42, which is which is a sim simplicity of house church. There's always some food, at least some refreshment, some water, finger foods, if nothing else, sometimes a, a whole potluck meal where everybody brings something. But the point is this, they were meeting on Friday nights and... Uh, and they didn't want to call themselves a house church. Some of the, some of the people who were leading and hosting uh, recognized that they were a church, that they're already being a church, but they didn't want to bring it up to the people to be a church. To them, it was just Friday night fellowship. And the whole idea of being a church was so, so uh, um, polarizing that eventually when they did bring it up, say, you know, we're really a church, we're functioning as a church, people started leaving. Uh, some of the people started leaving because they thought, oh, a church, you know, we have to ordain elders and we have to have a pastor and all that stuff. And they don't realize that that's not the biblical pattern. The, the standalone pastor didn't happen for several hundred years, um, you know, after Pentecost. So uh, they took turns. It was a plurality of, of couples and, and folks who would lead um, the house churches. But the point is this, well, how do I start? How do I start? Many house churches start with just one family, one couple, a couple of individuals meeting in their home on a regular basis. House church is not like youth group. <clears throat> there were some early on, I don't think so much now, who were voices in, in the quote-unquote house church movement who advocated a kind of a youth group approach. No commitment, uh, no expectations, nothing expected of you, no responsibilities. Come and go as you please. And that really is not a house church. A house church is... is follows the prime directive. The prime directive is this, teaching them to observe and to do everything that I commanded you. Make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe and to do whatever what I've commanded you. Observing, even in the old King James, even in the, the, the Greek, even in the Aramaic, observing means not just uh, teaching them, but training them. That is that there is, there is an element there of relationship where they can see how you apply your faith to, to life, to life situations. And so uh, house church is, is number one, <clears throat> it, is, it has a purpose. And that purpose is discipleship. The prime directive is make disciples of all nations. How do you do this, Lord? You do this by letting them observe the things that he's commanded us. And so that means relationships. So what it means is that when you gather together in a house church, it's all about furthering the discipleship process. It's about learning and growing. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 26, when you come together, somebody may have a psalm that is a, a song set to a poem set to music, um, a revelation, a teaching, gifts of the Spirit in operation. 
It can be any number of things that, that go on spiritually when you come together, but it's all about the discipleship process. This is not just a come and go as you please, no commitment. It is. It means that you're meeting at a set time, uh, and and a lot of house churches start over a, a meal on a you know some evening where you invite another friend, a couple, somebody over, and you start talking about getting together on a regular basis. And sometimes people will start out once a month or twice a month, and uh, rarely does somebody actually start out and say, "Okay, I want to do things weekly." And they can go for some time, you know, twice a month. It, there's there's not a lot said in the New Testament about how to do church. And if you look at the different personalities of the churches, the Corinthians were different from the Galatians who were dealing with Judaizers who were saying, go, let's go back to the Messianic law or go to the law, it's Messianic Christianity. You go to the Ephesians who were having behavioral issues, Corinthians who were having a separate set of behavioral issues. Uh, you know, each house church is going to be different. It has a different personality, but it's all about the discipleship process. It's all about growing in Christ. We need that fellowship. We need that support. We need that that networking. You know, when the Lord appeared to me in, Jan in November 4th of 2001 and told me to do this, he said, remember, he said, when, when I asked why, he said, it's against a time to come. Against a time to come. He said, be a resource for them, for it's against a time to come. That's an amazing thing. And we're, we're here we are 20 years later, plus years later, and, and we're seeing this because traditionally, historically, it's been economic hardship and persecution that have caused the church to grow the most. And it's in that economic hardship that you need each other, that you find each other as a resource to help each other out, to walk through life together. And uh, and so you look at this and say, how do I how do I do this? Number one, just start find somebody else who's floating, who's not committed, who's who's dechurched or unchurched, you know, and and invite them over for a meal and start talking, start getting to know one another, invest in the relationship. When somebody comes to me, I'll get an email from time to time and say, the Lord has called me to start house churches. And, uh, and when I talk to them more, they're often approaching it like they would in the, in the pyramid church, in the auditorium church. That is, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do that. It's like, mm, it doesn't happen like that. It happens more casually. You know, in Philippi, in uh, excuse me, Acts chapter 16, when Paul was in Philippi, he just went to where he knew uh, people were praying. Women in particular were praying. There wasn't a synagogue in the city. And so he just met and talked to some of the women there who were meeting to pray and talked to them about Jesus. It came very naturally. That became the house church at Philippian, at Philippi with the with Lydia being the main host uh, for that. And then also the Philippian jailer who cleaned up Paul and Sil Silas's wounds, whose whole family got saved. And, and Paul's letter to the Philippians is his warmest and most transparent letter that he, that he wrote of the New Testament. So you look at that and you say, how do we start? <clears throat> Just start meeting. You're sitting there saying, oh, you know, is there anybody near me and, and everything? And, and from time to time, we can do that and we can help and we encourage people to, to get on our Zoom meetings and everything else so that you can get to know people and see where people are from all over the world uh, in that. But there's, but you know what, if you and a friend can start gathering, and just say, this is going to be our church. We're meeting with purpose. We're disciples. We want to grow in the Lord. That's our prime directive. There is, is to further the development of Christ in us, the hope of glory. <clears throat> then, then you've got a good foundation, a good start sharing responsibilities. Somebody hosts one week and somebody hosts the next time you meet. And, and take turns sharing, and it's open. It's not sermon-oriented. You don't have to come up with a teaching. It is, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 26, you've got a psalm, a teaching, a revelation, maybe gifts of the Spirit to pray for one another. Uh, you know, you can, you can get my book, Return of the First Church, which is my journey from house church to, or excuse me, to house church from the auditorium. And it's nothing bad against the auditorium. I'm just saying that when, when economic pressures arise and persecution arise that meeting in the homes is going to be where you have that emotional support and sometimes resource support because folks there are times coming that are going to be difficult for the u.s for the world and uh, and you need that to have your you've got your back covered so to speak you've got people in your life uh, and so the point is invest in the relationships invest in the relationships uh Pay the price to move these people in priority. I, I'm going to share this. I don't want to go on too long. But, um, you know, the, the thing is what, what we talk about is living intentionally towards one another, living with purpose towards one another, that the people that you fellowship with in your home rise up in level of priority. And when push comes to shove, they win out 
in terms of uh, who needs what, in terms of filling your schedule, as, as far as you know what's important, who's important in your life, you'll find those people, that nucleus of people that you meet with become very important in your lives. And so it becomes a lifestyle of, of just walking through life together with multiple friends and family. And it really is a lifestyle rather than a program. It's not something you, you just start off and say, we're going to do this. It's that relationship-based faith. So anyway, I didn't want to go on too long today. I just It's really on my heart to talk more and more about house church. And, and folks, this is serious. You're going to need each other in the time to come because there's, you know, as the Lord told me before the pandemic, you know, that there's an, that he said, you'll see an underground economy develop in my body. You'll hear of giving and receiving, buying and selling, trading and bartering. Um, you know, and he talked about how house church was going to become the way of doing church and how it's going to be very much like Acts uh, chapter 5 verses 11 through 13, where on the one hand there was fear that fell on everybody and they weren't sure, you know, about this group of uh, these people meeting in homes. And on the other hand, it says the Lord added daily those that would be saved. And folks, it's meeting in the homes. It's laying hands on one another. It's praying for one another. That's where you'll find answered prayer. That's where you'll found a, find a vitality, a, a depth to your walk as, as uh, you're in relationship with other people. Like I've said so many times, anybody can say they're a Christian, but that's inward, that's of the heart. God has, has made it such that righteousness is proven within a framework of relationships. So you can, you can go to church and in the big auditorium and, and praise God for it. I was in that system for 25 years. And you can, you can say, praise God, I'm a Christian. But the fact of the matter is, it's a question of who do you have in your life that proves you are a Christian? How is that fruit of the Spirit manifest in your life? And uh, anybody could say they're a Christian, but he has designed it so that our righteousness is proven within a framework of relationships. So anyway, we'll let you go. God bless. CWOWI.org, Church Without Walls International, a house church network, and uh, sign up for my weekly thoughts and my monthly e-newsletter there. All right, God bless. Bye-bye.